Hey all Ryan from Prima Coffee here. Today, we've got something pretty fun planned for you. We're gonna compare and contrast two of the very best electronic home grinders in the market, the Fellow Ode and the Baratza Virtuoso Plus. The Fellow Ode and the Virtuoso Plus are two of the biggest contenders in the home brewing category. Both grinders offer exceptional grind and build quality, but they're functionally very different from each other. So today we're going to help you figure out which one might be best for you. Let's jump right in and talk a little bit about fit and finish. There is a pretty clear aesthetic difference between the Virtuoso Plus and the Ode. The Virtuoso Plus is closer to what we'd call a timeless look because it'll complement just about any space. It's constructed mainly of plastic, but with some heavy steel accents on the face and the sides. The Ode features a sleek and ultra modern aesthetic and is constructed primarily of aluminum and also includes steel parts um, and a relatively small number of plastic parts. The modern design may not be for everyone, but we think Fellow did a really great job with the aesthetic overall. And especially if you own other Fellow products like the Stag or the EKG kettle, uh, this grinder will complete that look. Next, let's get right to the heart. The burr in a grinder is probably the most impactful part when it comes to the grind quality it's able to produce. It really comes down to these two little pieces. The Virtuoso Plus features a 40 millimeter steel conical burr set, which is relatively common in home grinders and in hand grinders as well. The Fellow Ode features a 64 millimeter flat steel burr set, which are more commonly found in commercial grinders, but rarely used in home grinders. Conical and flat burr grinders do cut coffee in different ways. And a bit later in the video, we'll get into more specifics about what those differences translate to in terms of performance and taste. Both the Ode and Virtuoso Plus are what we call brew or filter grinders at heart, meaning they work best for applications like an AeroPress, pour over, automatic brewer, or an immersion like a cold brew or a French press. Both grinders feature what we call stepped adjustment, meaning there is a predetermined number of available grind sizes. The Virtuoso Plus hopper connects to an adjustment ring in the collar, and grind size can be adjusted by turning that hopper side to side there are a total of 40 available grind settings. The Ode features a large, very prominent adjustment wheel on the face and has much more substantial clicks between each of those settings. It has a total of 31 available grind size options. Both grinders are capable of dialing in for any filter method, though the Virtuoso Plus does have an advantage in that it has a broader grind size range. And like I mentioned, more steps of adjustment within that range. So that allows you to make finer tweaks to your grind size. The Ode's finest grind is somewhere in the five to 600 micron range, whereas the Virtuoso Plus is able to grind all the way down to 200 microns with proper calibration. And that's plenty fine enough for espresso. The process to calibrate the Virtuoso Plus for a fine grind is a bit of a pain. It involves removing the outer case of the grinder, resetting the adjustment ring, then removing and replacing a screw. Um, it's not super fun to do, but you'll probably only need to do it once within the life of the grinder. The Ode, on the other hand, cannot be calibrated any finer. Um, you can calibrate it coarser, but you know it absolutely cannot achieve an espresso grind. It cannot be calibrated any finer out of the box. So overall, you're gonna get more versatility with the Virtuoso Plus, a much broader range of available grind sizes than you can with the Ode, but that may or may not matter to you depending on what types of brewing devices you're using at home. The Ode and Virtuoso Plus grinders have very different approaches to dosing. The Ode features a shallow 80 gram hopper designed for single dosing, which involves pre-weighing your beans by either weight or volume, then grinding as needed. You can't store several days for the beans in the Ode's hopper for on-demand grinding. Uh, the intention behind this is to encourage you to keep your coffee sealed up in a dark airtight container to extend the freshness of your coffee. The Ode uh, features a smart PID controlled motor that senses the resistance against the burrs and automatically shuts the motor off when it determines that all of the coffee in the hopper has been ground. That means you only need to hit the power button once to turn the grinder on, then the grinder will turn itself off automatically when the grind cycle is complete. The Virtuoso Plus hopper holds approximately 360 grams of light roasted coffee, less if you're using a darker roast, 
and the bin holds about 200 grams of ground coffee. On the front of the grinder is a button and a click wheel for its integrated grind timer, which allows you to program a precise grind time in increments of one tenth of a second. The grinder will maintain your programmed grind time and then all you need to do is press the button once, start the grind cycle, and the grinder will shut itself off automatically when the timer runs out. The large hopper and bin capacity in combination with that built-in grind timer makes the Virtuoso Plus ideal for on-demand grinding. Uh, you can have the hopper full, then simply set your preferred grind time, press the button, and then let the grinder finish its job. It is worth noting that you'll get a more accurate coffee output by pre-weighing your beans instead of using the Virtuoso Plus's timer function. The output with the timer function may vary by a couple grams, but if you pre-measure your beans in single dose, you'll get out exactly what you put in. So again, the Virtuoso Plus does offer a bit more versatility in the dosing category as well, but this may or may not be important to you depending on your grinding and brewing routine at home. We did two types of grounds retention tests with these grinders. In the first test, we took them apart, did an air blast to clear out all the grounds from the burr chamber and the chute. Then we ground 20 grams at a fine setting and measured the difference between the input and the output by weight. The Ode had an average retention of 0.8 grams and the Virtuoso Plus had an average retention of 0.6 grams. In the second test, we measured the output dose variance in consecutive cycles. In other words, we didn't clean the grinder out between each cycle, we just measured the difference between input and output for a series of grind cycles. In these tests, the Ode had a variance of about 0.3 to 0.5 grams per cycle. The Virtuoso Plus had a variance of about 0 to 0.1 grams per cycle, which is almost no variance at all. This is another small win for the Virtuoso Plus, but I will also mention that nearly every time we single dosed with the Virtuoso Plus, there was a stubborn, stray bean left popcorning up and down, refusing to grind through, at least for the last several seconds after the rest of the coffee was ground. This isn't a big deal, but maybe a slight annoyance for those of you who like to single dose. Set right in the middle of the grind size range, the Ode will grind 50 grams of coffee in about eight to 10 seconds though it does take an extra four seconds or so for the PID uh, to sense that your coffee's been ground and shut the motor off. The Virtuoso Plus will grind 50 grams at a similar setting in about 20 to 25 seconds. So there is a substantial difference in grind speed between the two machines. Some mess is unavoidable with any coffee grinder. The combination of static electricity, Papery chaff and tiny particles of coffee will result in the need for a light cleanup after every grind cycle. Um, when you pull the bin from the Virtuoso Plus, some chaff and maybe a few grounds will fall from the chute onto the grounds bin platform and on your counter. And there's really nothing you can do about it. The, the Ode features a grinds knocker on the side, which um, is there to loosen any particles stuck in the chute after a grind cycle so that they fall into the grounds catch. This is a really neat feature that normally we only see in commercial grinders, so we're pretty excited to see it in a home grinder. The Ode's grounds catch also includes a plastic chaff shield that sits between the grounds catch and the chute to help prevent those papery bits from catching some air and floating off onto your counter, and it directs the majority of those particles directly into your grounds catch. It's a very thoughtful design from Fellow, and this results in a lighter cleanup than the Virtuoso Plus. Grind quality is very difficult to evaluate objectively, and it requires some serious scientific equipment to get it right. What we normally do is find a grinder's sweet spot, or usually what's one step coarser than the point at which the coffee begins tasting bitter or overextracted. Then we can compare the results between two grinders by taste. Uh, the majority of our team members consistently pointed to the Ode samples um, in blind taste tests when asked which cup they preferred. The coffees were brewed consecutively by the same person, tasted blindly, and evaluated on a I like this better, here's why basis. We can also back this up in a simple visual comparison of the grind at comparable settings. I also want to mention that the differences in taste between these grinders aren't exactly significant. In fact, if you're not experienced tasting coffee, you might not be able to tell the difference uh, between these cups. Solid reliability and product support is one thing you don't want to be left without after spending a lot of money on a home grinder. But lucky for you, both Fellow and Baratza have very good reputations when it comes to after-sales support and parts availability. 
In fact, Baratza's tech support team is one of the best in the entire coffee industry. And take that from somebody who spent seven years in Prima's sales and customer service department. Baratza's Bellevue Washington team is very responsive, either by phone or email, and they have lots of articles, PDF downloads, and videos online to help with troubleshooting, uh, calibration, and repair. Uh, Baratza has a no grinder goes in the trash policy, um, and their team will do everything they can to keep your grinder in working condition throughout the years, often even sending parts free of charge. The bottom line is you can try, but you can't really beat the depth of experience and thorough product support offered by Baratza. Fellow also uh, has maintained a great reputation historically um, for product support. Um, we have worked with them for product support with items like kettles over the years, um, but they are new to the grinder game. And we're just gonna have to see how parts availability and support plays out over the next few years. We do appreciate how few plastic components the ode is constructed with internally. It's seemingly very solid. Um, there's no obvious flaws that seem like they would cause a problem down the road, but you know it's just too early to tell. So we're gonna have to wait it out. So which grinder is better? Well, while you get a little more clarity in the cup with the ode, you definitely get more versatility out of the Virtuoso Plus. The Ode's design encourages you to keep your coffee fresh with its single dose hopper. And the Virtuoso Plus is just a little more convenient for folks with busy routines who prefer an on-demand grinder. What do you guys think? Um, sound off in the comments and let us know which you think is the best grinder. For us, it's a really hard pick. It depends on how you prefer to use a grinder and what your brewing routine is like. That's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching. If you liked that video, there's lots more content where that came from. Overviews, comparisons, recipes, events coverage, and more. Hit that subscribe button, like this video, and come visit us at primacoffee.com. Happy brewing!